We're good. All right, thank you. Uh, so just a quick roll call. I have Damian, uh, Kate, Amy, Jill, Joshua, Betty, B. Chris, and who's ever 84174424. If you could identify yourself, that would be helpful. Okay, we still have a quorum. So <laughs> let's move right into it. If I could have approval of the June 2021 meeting, motion to approve. Thank you, Kate. Uh, do I have a second? Amy, you want to second that? I saw that hand go up. <laughs> Any edits, corrections, additions, deletions, grammar checks? We're missing Carol, who is our perfect grammar checker. So I'm going to have to rely on somebody else now. All right, hearing none. All those in favor, you want to just raise your hands, please? Okay. Uh, any opposed? Unanimous motion carries. Uh, uh, Chairman Trezik, just uh, while we're on the subject of the minutes, we are actively looking to uh, retain somebody to do those. We did lose our recording secretary. Uh, so if anyone knows of somebody who wants to uh, make some um, money on the side or um, uh, has an interest in doing that, please uh, let me know. There is a uh, posting on the town website. So we are actively looking to find some people, not just to cover this commission, but some other boards and commissions. Can you give us a little rundown on what it pays? I think it's between $15 and $16 an hour. Um, and the good thing about the Zoom meetings is they don't necessarily have to attend the meetings. They can watch them after the fact and uh, you know create the minutes from that. So um, we've got actually five or six boards and commissions um, that we're looking to have, have somebody uh, cover. So there's plenty of uh, flexibility uh, in terms of the schedule to do that, so. And how detailed do they need to be? Uh, as you can see from your minutes, as long as they catch, you know, the basic subject matter and, and cover the uh, motions, um, but the Zoom recordings are really helpful for people to yeah. go back and do that. Right, okay, all right. So if anybody knows anybody, uh, Peter, they can just go to HR at Town Hall. Go to the town website and there's a posting of available jobs and it'll take you uh, where you need to go there. Okay, all right, great. All right, uh, moving into old business, open items. Um, the EV charging station, have we um, heard any more about any additional funding coming down the line from the state? There's, there's been some hints about it, but nothing um, specific. So we have been copied in on some things, um, but nothing, um, no deadlines, nothing pending that I can um, speak to, but we are optimistic that there will be some opportunities coming up. The subject was actually discussed at the last council meeting. Um, so um, that's, I think, a good sign that it's being discussed at, at that level, so. Yeah, well, considering that every other town seems to have one except for us, be nice to have one. <laughs> Peter, do you know what the plan is? Are we going to be getting just a general one that everybody can hook into, or are we going to get the whatchamacallit one that is specific? I yeah, I think we're going to have to make make those um, decisions. Um, there are some private property owners who are also pursuing charging stations for their uh, employees and, and that kind of thing. So I think we'll have to look at what the lay of the land is, what's available in town so that we have a, uh, you know, at least a variety. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, rather than going in one particular uh, direction. And then we'll have to decide whether, you know, they're, they're fast charge or slow charge or, you know, exactly what all those details might be. Fast charge would be more, would be better for drawing people off the highway, tourists off the highway. Yes, that is true. 
because you wanted to fit in with, oh, we can stop and grab lunch and do a little visiting. And right. Then back in our car, we're charged. <laughs> right. And, you know, a lot of, I'm, I'm seeing a lot where they're kind of going towards the uh, Tesla and that's proprietary. So if you have anything else, you can't use it. Oh, gotcha. Right. So, okay. All right. Uh, anything else on the EV charging station? Okay. Let's move into visitor map and heritage way kiosk. So we have the grant Peter, and that is pretty much all set, right? We're just waiting for construction. So the um, panels are all pretty much drafted. They're being still tweaked a little bit. We've got to, you know, add the insets with, you know, you are here, or this is nearby. Mm -hmm. um, so we're working on, we've got a meeting of the group next Tuesday to kind of go through the punch list of uh, odds and ends that people have to work on. Uh, so we're getting uh, real close. We're still pretty much on schedule, maybe a little bit behind schedule. The challenge will be during leaf season, getting the uh, public works crew oh. separated from that in order to install these. Yeah. So we may have to go to a plan B. I mean, it's really pretty much digging a hole and pouring cement. So I don't, I, I haven't really talked to the group about whether we should start thinking about volunteers but we, we have a hard deadline, I think, of November 15th to, uh, to do this. And um, so as we get closer to that date, we have, we'll probably have to figure out the installation. So we are, we are talking. I've ordered the, um, the granite um, you know, from that same company. That, of course, the price has gone up. Um, so um, no surprises there. But yeah, we're, um, I think we're going to be good. We'll We'll figure out, I think, a lot of the odds and ends on the next Tuesday. Okay. I was going to say, if we've already ordered the granite, is there any reason why we can't ask Public Works to do the pour now so it's ready to go? They really have to have it here and the height. And, you know, there's some things that they have to, they can dig the hole, but I don't want them leaving a hole, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they like, it really has to be done right about the same. I also have to get the church to agree where they want it. Yeah, this, and we had to do call before you dig. And, you know, there's a lot of little odds and ends that go with it. Okay. All right. I was just trying to figure out how to avoid the conflict with the leaf pickup. Um, but it really means we need to finish the, the sign itself ASAP so we can get it manufactured and then go. So do we know when the granite is expected? He was, uh, I talked to him yesterday about that. He's ordered it. So I, I maybe next week. Okay. He's also, then he's got a, he still, have to, he still has to fabricate the tops. Just so you know, um, Rocky Hill Historical Society got some type of grant as well. And they're mimicking our granite design. So they were going, and they were going, coincidentally, we're reaching out to him too. So we may realize a bit of a cost savings uh, because they're going to, uh, or order at the same time. So it might help us a little bit. Um, okay. as we well. should get a reference fee. See, there you, you know? go. Right. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, Heritage Commission membership and appointment. So we still have a couple of vacancies, correct? Welcome, Betty, by the way. Yes, Betty Standish was appointed. Um, open. We have someone else who joined us. Who's hi, Betty? Who's five two nine six four eight four? Well, okay. You can unmute yourself and tell us who you are. If you don't want to, then I guess that's okay. <laughs> Charlie Ford. Oh, hi, Charlie. So. Thank you. All right, um, promo video, Peter, I'm assuming that's still on hold at the moment. So we're still, um, as, as I think we might have discussed at the last meeting, the American Recovery Act funding that the town is getting, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, a, a portion of it uh, is theoretically supposed to be uh, targeted to tourism, hospitality, you know, those kinds of things. So uh, at least in my mind, um, some of that funding, I think, should be earmarked for um, 
tourism related things. So I would probably also um, suggest that we consider what other things um, that money might, what our needs are uh, that, that, we, that we can potentially request uh, to be put towards um, things that you guys do uh, to promote Weathersfield in, in addition to videos and that kind of thing. So, um, so I'm hoping that when the dust settles and there's some more guidance from the Treasury Department or we see what other towns are doing, uh, there will be some resources uh, hopefully available uh, for heritage and, and tourism going going forward. Okay, so um, can we put this on the agenda for next month in terms of just call it American Recovery Funds and idea brainstorming? Um, unless anybody has any brainstorms off the top of their head right now. Oh, you're laughing over there, I see you. <laughs> Um, so I think it's a great idea. We should think about kind of things that we might want to do. Um, we couldn't use it for things like horse and carriage rides or anything along those lines, could we? I, it, I think right now, um, without the parameters and the guidance in place, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of wide open. I would probably also suggest that we invite the town manager as he is the closest to the subject um, in terms of the guidance that he's getting and the information he's getting from other towns. So um, if we are gonna brainstorm, I think it would be helpful for him to kind of set whatever parameters he, he has available to him so that we're not getting too far afield um, and we can sort of hone in on things that would be justifiable to spend the funds on. Right, okay, all right. That makes sense. I mean, I'm just looking under new business. We have a couple of brochures and I see no reason why the cost of printing, developing, designing and printing those couldn't be under the American Recovery Act. So our wrap cards, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have any thoughts on the promo video or other things we can use? to promote that we have not had money for in the past? Maybe the concerts and plays that have been going on around here. Mm -hmm. Little clips of them. Yeah, I, th I think I'd like to know what the objectives are. Um, is it, how, like, how are we recovering? Is it bringing in, you know, more business to everyone? Is it promoting culture and and our you know our historic sites and all that? Like just to make sure everything lines up perfectly with what the purpose of the grants are. Yeah. Okay. I'll see if the manager has any guidance that we can distribute ahead of time to kind of set set the table a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Certified local government, yay, we've made some progress. Um, Peter, we're still missing a couple of documents, correct? We have, we have at least half of them. Yeah, we're getting there. We've got, um, we got most of the biographies for the uh, uh, Historic District Commission. We've got some of their policy documents. Um, we're waiting for a few bios and some other uh, documents, but um, I'd say we're, you know, about 40% 40, 40 there. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, so uh, thanks to Kim for, for getting that together. Finally, I know the council is really interested um, in getting this done. So um, at least we're making progress, which is good. So cultural district designation. I don't know who was at the last meeting and they want to talk about it. I'll, I'll start and then folks can can jump in we've um, we met as the committee July 23rd um, we followed that up with a uh, August 5th uh, zoom call with the Greater Hartford Art Council people to get some more details uh, they were also able to share with us uh, some documents uh, that might be helpful I did have a call with the mayor and the manager uh, to 
see what the mayor's position on this was. He was very supportive. So the plan is to go to the council on September 21, as we need a, a letter from the mayor and we also need a resolution to actually file uh, the application. So uh, assuming that agenda isn't uh, too packed, uh, that's the uh, timeline. Um, and then the, uh, the committee can meet and we can pull together all the other supporting documents that we would need. Okay, are you gonna want, so when was the date of that council meeting you were hoping to be at? September 2-0. Two zero. Two zero. Um, and would you like people from the committee to be there as well? I think it would be um, helpful. helpful to show um, support from the uh, culture community. So I'll, uh, as we get closer to that, I will, I think it's, I think the council had the last meeting was in person. So I'm, I'm not sure about whether the next one will be in, in Zoom or not, but uh, so I will, uh, I will coordinate that. Okay. Um, considering that there's now a mask mandate, I would guess that we're going to all remote, but who knows? Uh, uh, Josh was, um, I think in 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 the the arts meeting and as well as the committee meeting. So Joshua, if you had if you had anything you want to throw in here, I just I think it's uh, really exciting. And didn't we discover it was about a mile? Our 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 cultural district would be roughly a mile, which is what they recommend. So we're yeah, it was just serendipitous. Good, I love serendipitous things that work so well. We don't have to go do extra work. Uh, the Greater Hartford Arts Council is very enthusiastic and super pumped that we're doing this. At least that was my, uh, that's the feeling I got when we, Peter and I met with them. Okay. Yes, they seemed very, very supportive and um, so. Good. All right. It'll be great to get that designation. Okay. Any other old business? Okay, moving on to new business. Can I just lump the two group brochures together, the Broad Street Green brochure and the Heritage Way brochure? Broad Street Green is the trees, right? It's the trees and um, also some, some other things included in that when we revised it. The, that was not, that was a, um, that brochure was not a tourism product. We came in, the last go round and you know paid for the edits and things like that through it film. wasn't it the um, district commission no it was the um I'm trying to think what they what they called themselves it beautification was, uh, people i'm sorry the beautification is it them no hold on a second let me go see if i can grab one i think it has their logo um okay It does not have their logo. Um, oh, I found it. Uh, the Village Improvement Association. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh. Okay. You know why? Because I was thinking Rob Gary, who happened to be on both. <laughs> yep. Um, so they, I think, paid for the printing uh, because this was created before I think we were involved. So we may not have the rights. So um, if anyone knows of anyone in the Village Improvement Association, if Rob is still involved. Rob doesn't even live in town anymore, does he? I don't know. Damien's shaking his head, right? Damien, didn't he move? Right, yeah, I think he moved to West Hartford. Yeah, okay. so I don't know anybody who's on the village improvement. Um, how about Lisa Leonard? Does anyone? 
I'm just looking at, there's a list of who, who was involved. Phil, obviously, Phil Lohman did some of the artwork, but many of the folks, uh, Doug Ovian, his name is on here. Doug is still around, right? Yeah, I can go to Doug. Okay. Okay, so Jill, if you can check with Doug, Mm -hmm. And worst case, reach out to Phil to see who kind of heads up the Village Improvement Association. That would be really helpful. Okay, I can do that. They actually have a Facebook page. I just looked it up. Oh, it doesn't look like anyone's. Yeah, it's not active. Yeah. Um, May was the last time someone posted. <clears throat> so we are, we are down to our last few uh, of these. So um, there would have to be... Uh, an effort to, I, I don't know that they need, I mean, many of the names here are very old, so. Um, yeah. They'd probably just be happy we're willing to pay to print them. I would think so. Right, I think so too. But I do think they have a, the last time they had a budget and they contributed towards it, so I would hope that would still be the case. We could try sending them a message through Facebook, see if anybody's it looks like the last time someone posted was in May. Okay. Uh, but maybe someone would respond. And this will be expensive because it's a multi-fold. Yeah. It folds out. It's like an 11 by 17, isn't it? It's, oh, it's huge. Yeah. So. But last time we printed it, we didn't go through our um, rec card people, did we? I'll have to go back and, ch and check through finance who there's no print there's no printer reference on this either right so i do think it'd be worth asking ctm uh, how much it would cost to print through them it couldn't hurt to get pricing right okay All right so we need more of those and then we also need um more heritage way brochures so that's probably more um immediate. I just spoke with Phil today. Um, and we're not quite finalized, you know, with the additional Heritage Way kiosks. So, and that probably won't happen until the, you know, December, November 15th. So we were thinking we would just print a limited supply to get us through, you know, the fall. And then in the spring next year, revise the brochure, add the new locations. And, right. uh, and print a, a larger supply. Because we're adding two locations plus the kiosk yeah. of all the shops, right? So it's an additional three. Right. Okay. Do you need a motion for that? I just, I don't know what the pricing would be, but if um, maybe just a general motion to, you know, authorize the printing uh, of a limited supply for the remainder of 21. How many do you think we need? 500? Yeah, we put a call into the printer just to see how many we, um, might be more than that, might be a thousand. So they, they do tend to, they go pretty quickly. So okay. All right. I think in the fall, they will probably go even right. a little faster. Because yeah. you have a lot more people, you'll have a lot more people in town during the fall, that's true. Right. How about if, should I make a motion that we print? Okay. Up to a thousand. Does that sound reasonable? Yep. Of of the heritage waste flyers. Yep. yep. Can I have a second? Thank you, Joshua. Uh, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on it? Hearing none. All those in favor? Raise your hands. We'll just assume Jill is a yes. She's not there. Moment. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay. 2021 photo contest. It's that time of year again. It is. Looking at the previous um, uh, documents, we usually set the deadline towards the last week of October. So, um, and that's been pretty consistent for the last couple of years. Um, we, we want people to have as much of the fall season uh, as possible. 
Uh, we could push it out if you'd like, because um, I'm not sure if we're doing, once again, if we're going to do the holiday social and EDIC event at the, at the you know, country club. We didn't do it last year. I'm, you know, it's not sounding that great again this year. So that was usually the, the reason to have a, you know, shorter schedule. Um, they haven't made that decision yet, but nevertheless, I don't know if it matters if you push it out a week or two or not for the deadline, but something to think about. So I'm uh, just curious how everyone feels about that because we have done it in the fall for the last couple of years, which means we get a lot of fall pictures. We don't get a lot of spring and summer pictures. Um, so do we want to do a fall one and think about a spring one for next year? Do we want to push this out for spring into summer next year? What do you guys think? I don't know. We, I mean, part of the thing was to have pictures we can use. We probably have a million pictures we can use at this point, don't we? For the fall. That's what I'm saying. So maybe it would be better. I don't know how people feel to just push it out and maybe do it like July or August of next year. So it would encompass spring and summer. What about having um, different um, categories for photos? Mm -hmm. so overall winter, winter, but you could have a best spring, best summer, best winter, best fall photo. Mm -hmm. That would get people to think more about Yep. yep, people have their pictures. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, that is a good idea. Were we using those photos for the calendar? Yes. So when does next year's calendar come out? In December, right? No, it doesn't usually. We have to wait till the town's um, financial statement oh. is finalized. And unfortunately, we don't usually get that until early in the new year or around the holidays. So we never, they're usually printed. We do them, we print them uh, with 13 months in the calendar because by the time the prints hit the street, you know, we're almost in February and there's really not a lot we can do about that because that's just the timing of the financial statement. I think as Kate said, we do have a lot of pictures already. So if we put, pushed it out to, to, be, to next year, we still have enough to choose from, I think, for a calendar. Um, doing it at a different time of year will just encourage more people to think of other times to do pictures. I don't know. I do like Amy's idea of, yeah. you know, incur because people just are taking them that time of year, but maybe we could send something out at the beginning of the year, like letting people know, you know, be, be aware of what you're taking pictures of because our photo contest is going to be broken down into these categories. And I don't know, we could still do it for next fall, but if people have been aware, gee, oh, this was a great picture I took in the spring and they know that that's going to be a category, then maybe they would submit it in the fall. Then we'd have them for the next calendar. I think breaking it up into categories like that would be a great idea. So, the price, so if we did it, if we did it this round and announced those categories, do we think we'd get pictures from the spring and the summer? If we did it now, yeah. we could. I mean, people have taken pictures. I just wonder if they, you know, if they concentrate more on, oh, this is a contest-worthy picture, right. you know, right? You know, so I don't know <laughs> if just general picture someone's taken with their phone is something they'd want to submit, but. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to do it this fall and then, you know, send out something in January, maybe even in the calendar, you know, look at these great pictures. And did you know that they came from our photo contest? And this year, the photo contest is going to include blah, 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 all, all four seasons, and it will be held in the fall. But, you know, be busy taking pictures from all four seasons. I think this last year or two, um, because of people being outside all year round, we're likely to get some, mm -hmm. 
some non non fall pictures because people have been and we've had the bicycle on Maine. You had porch yeah. fest. You had a lot of things going on that you didn't have in previous years. So that is true. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then, do we want to do it? What did you say we posted at the end of October? Is the deadline? We can play around with that, but normally it's the last, you know, last Friday uh, in October, whatever. That would be. Um, 30th? October 29th. 29th. Or you could push it out as long as, you know, there's some, there's some flexibility in that. Just past practice was, was the last week of October. Um, so that's the day before Halloween, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with that date, I guess. Um, Two days before Halloween days before Halloween. Is everybody else okay with that date? Mm -hmm. And the categories of the seasons as opposed to see a lot of heads shaking. Yeah. Okay. And then I think next year, if we just do a couple of announcements, don't forget photo contests will be in the fall. Don't forget about doing all the seasons and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. All right, Vita. Okay. You sold me on it. Um, so do you want to we can set a date in our next meeting for when we want to do the judging, right? Yes. Yep. That's usually what we do. We did it virtually last year, didn't we? I think we might have, yeah. Yeah, I think we did. So, okay. Just for those who have not been part of it, uh, basically everyone on the commission is invited to go through and vote on them and we do it. And if we're on Robin, we look at all of them and then we take the top vote getters and go back through and winnow them down again um, before we come up with the winner. So um, we have access to all of the photos that were taken, not just the winning ones. So um, it does give us a nice cache of photos to use for things like Facebook, for Twitter, for Instagram and Jesse uses them pretty, you're pretty good about using them on a regular basis besides the calendar, right, Jess? I think he's frozen. I tried. There he goes. <laughs> he's just, he's frozen. He's speaking, but he's frozen. Yeah, my computer's not working too well. Yeah. I keep having to log, out, log off and log on. Yeah, I know the feeling, so. Okay, quarterly stakeholders meeting. Um, we haven't had one in a while. Given COVID again, I, what do you guys think? Usually it's an opportunity to talk about what's coming up in the fall. Are there things that we can piggyback off of each other? Um, it's always better in person, but I mean, if worst case, we can do a virtual. Um, I don't want to wait too long. It's now the end of August. It'd be great to do it at the beginning of September. Um, I don't know how Joshua feels, but if we were to do it in the barn, you could really space people, give that, you know, six feet of space plus people could put masks on. Just throwing that out there. Joshua, I don't know what you think. Yeah, and also if it's a nice night out or afternoon out, um, you know, there's the, the garden and the courtyard, the patio, so, so to speak, in front of the, in front of the barn. Okay. All right. Um, so, Peter, what's your calendar like? I think we've been, we've been doing them on Fridays normally. Is that right? We yeah, have been. We've usually been making it a lunch meeting. Um, if you want to do it earlier than, than later, um, what about um, there's, there's some things going on Friday to the 10th, right? Or is that, or is that this Friday? I don't know, but I know I can't make the tenth. I will be in New York. Okay. The tenth um, will have an opening for uh, not an opening, a reception for our uh, nine eleven exhibit. Yeah, so that's probably how. How yeah. about maybe the seventeenth then? It's the seventeenth sound for most people. Okay, so the only ones we're really missing are the shopkeepers, right? Right. Um, so if we can make sure the shopkeepers are, let's, 
Q through the 17th. Um, and Joshua, thank you. If we can plan our meeting. Over you want to do you wanted to do a, a lunch? We we have a wedding that day in the barn, so I don't think we could accommodate a lunch meeting on that day. Oh, okay. Um, we could, you know, we certainly, if it was a nice day, we could eat outside, but if it was inside, it might be a little more tricky. I know we've used Keeney Center before. I believe that the ballroom would be open that day during the day, but I'd have to double check. We can at least open some windows if people are uncomfortable. If it's a nice enough day. The 24th is, uh, is open for uh, lunch. Um, Peter, what do you think? I'd rather do sooner rather than later. The 24th, the scarecrows will start. So can we shoot for the 17th and depending on the weather, we may be in your gardens, Joshua or Jill. If you can verify whether the Keeney might be available. Um, I mean, if people are comfortable eating inside distance, you, we have plenty of room in the new Holcomb Education Center for that. What do we usually have, Peter? Eight or nine people? Yeah, it's not a huge. Not a huge number. Not a huge number, so. Yeah, that would work. In that case, you could do it in the Holcomb Education Center as well. Okay. Okay. All right, that would be great. <clears throat> So 11.30 on the 17th? Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. So where am I? Here I am. Okay. Um, all right. So is there any other new business that anyone wants to bring up? Okay. Um, I'm going to run through reports. I'm going to ask, since we are now going to have a stakeholders meeting um, to cover us through the fall, uh, anybody want to give us just updates between now and say the end of September would be great. And then we can talk about the rest of the events um, at the stakeholder meeting and bring everybody up to speed at the September commission meeting. Um, Judy's not on the call. Peter, so you want to talk about EDIC? Sure. Uh, they've had a couple of uh, ribbon cuttings, uh, Popeye's Chicken, uh, Nails on Main, Grand Cafe. Uh, so um, we've been trying to catch up with some of the new businesses that have been uh, opening. A um, couple of properties have changed ownership. I think we've probably talked about some of these, but the uh, auction, the Clearinghouse Auction Gallery, you've probably seen the news on that. Um, there is interest in the um, in 1000 Silestine Highway that seems pretty serious. Uh, there's a group looking at the nursing home on Jordan Lane. Um, just trying to think, you've seen the, you've probably seen something about the brewery uh, that's looking at the Masonic building. Mm -hmm. um, we've got somebody who's looking to go into the old town uh, restaurant on Maine. Um, a couple local couple bought 147 uh, Main Street, which was Charlie's uh, old place, and they're they're trying to figure out what they need to do to to convert that uh, into a into a business. Um, just trying to think if I've missed. What's going on in the Rite Aid building? Uh, the uh, Gugliotti family, the International Cosmetology School uh, family, uh, purchased it. They are um, getting rid, rid of the 1950s vintage uh, contamination inside the building. So um, I'll leave it at that. So they're just basically gutting the inside. They are looking to um, lease it to somebody. They're not planning on using it for themselves just yet. So they bought it as an investment uh, and they're actively looking to uh, recruit uh, some tenants there. Great. Um, just trying to think what else. So are they going to create more than one entrance so it could be split? I, it's up in the air in terms of, yeah. you know, who they're talking to. It may be multiple tenants and maybe yeah. just one. Obviously, I think they prefer just one right. for the obvious uh, reasons. Um, so there's quite quite a few things. Uh, you've probably heard Sally's, Sally's Pizza from New Haven is coming to the uh, Borden. 
Um, there's another tenant going in there that I can't yet announce, but that will also be very positive. Yeah. I think those are the highlights. There's a lot going on, which is really good. Yes. So, okay. All right, uh, Melinda's not here from the shopkeepers, so we can do a catch up with them at the September meeting. Um, Porch Fest, I understand, was a tremendous success. So, looked like there were lots of people. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, Amy or Jill, the Historical Society. Well, we've had a very busy August. Um, we were so happy to host Times School Company's production of Romeo and Juliet. And over the four nights, they tell me that they think 600 people total came, but I think yeah. it was more. Um, and uh, all age groups, um, it was really great to see so many different people that we don't necessarily see at our events. So um, we were really happy with that. And we're already talking about the next thing. And their stage was great. Um, just it just nestled right in there and it was a natural amphitheater and they very kindly left it for porch fest. Um, so we had um, the Goza Goza duo uh, Esperanto duo it's two gentlemen from Goza. Um, we had the Jolly Beggars and then we had the Hartford Symphony Orchestra Quartet sponsored by Circa Antiques. Um, and great crowds for all of them. Um, I think it was a really great day. We lucked out with the weather again. So a uh, very positive day. Um, coming up for us just in September, we've got the reception for the 9-11 exhibit on September 10th from four to eight. Um, so do stop in. That exhibit runs through the end of the month. Um, uh, on the 15th, our tickets for our Old Weathersfield Lantern Light Tours go on sale and they do sell out every year. So um, we're gonna do it in person outside this year. Um, we've got some great characters lined up. Um, and then uh, Martha Smart will be doing her Ancient Burying Ground Tour uh, the 16th and the 18th. Um, and Martha is amazing, just the knowledge that this woman has. Uh, so if you've never been on her tour, there's an opportunity to catch it. And then this, we'll talk about more at um, stakeholders, but we're partnering with the um, Academy of the Arts and Betty uh, for a series of concerts programming. And that will be coming up um, uh, September 24th and October 21st. So stay tuned for that. I have to unmute myself. Okay, thanks. Uh, Joshua, and then we'll move in. We'll, we'll have, Betty's not on the agenda, but we haven't forgotten you, Betty. Thank you. <laughs> Joshua. Sure, so it's been a uh, successful summer season. Just to give you the quick update, we uh, partnered with a new Zenith theater company, had six performances of uh, both Talk Everlasting and Midsummer's Night's Dream. And uh, I'm just amazed by the talent of these young people that are in our in our midst and, and what they can do. Uh, uh, we've had the Summer Courtyard music series, which uh, ended with a blast on Friday. Of course, our regular tour season has continued and our other special events. So we've had 5,300 people visit the museum since June 3rd, uh, as of today. Um, so we're really pumped by that number. Um, uh, and then as a preview of things coming up, we have our witches and tombstones tours that are happening. We have our living history presentation with Tammy Denise. Um, and we have um, a, a music series coming up, a traditional music series. So we know that in 1775, there was, um, according to um, Mr. Webb, who is writing Mr. Wadsworth, that there was a dance with fiddle music in the web barn. And we have that documented in a letter. So we're pumped to be bringing uh, the musician John Doyle uh, in, uh, Irish guitar singer songwriter. 
And then on October 7th, Alistair Fraser and Natalie Haas, a, a Scottish fiddler uh, to uh, perform uh, for us in the Web Barn. I know this is not uh, September, but I, I think you all would want to know, uh, thanks to the support of the Historical Society, uh, they've al allowed us to adopt the name Weathersfield Antique Show, and we are bringing that to Old Weathersfield uh, with a opening night on November 12th. Uh, the show will then run on November 13th and 14th, featuring 20 dealers from around the country um, coming right here to Old Weathersfield. And just as a quick aside, as I've talked to people from around um, New England about doing the antique show, they all say, Old Weathersfield? That's so awesome. I love that place, which is really uh, kind of cool. So that's a little bit of what's going on at the Web Dean Stevens, unless Katie says I've missed something. <laughs> all right. Um, I will admit that it has been really busy traffic down in Old Weathersfield. I was driving through on a Friday evening. There was no parking and people were running around with chairs trying to get to your courtyard. <laughs> so, uh, was, I think the only lesson we learned, we may, we love activating on the streetscape. It's really hot in that courtyard. Yeah. So we may, we may move them to the, to the barn courtyard next year. Right. It's, it's uh, very warm. Yeah. And Amy, same thing. I mean, I drove by when times for what they were doing. I think they were rehearsing. But again, I think it's great that we're getting these crowds. I think it's really, really helpful. So, great. Eddie, where'd you go? Everybody keeps shifting around here and they're in different places. I'm like, where'd she go? <laughs> You're up, Betty. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so, wait, I'm just going to Um we're doing a, a little collaboration thing with um, the Historical Society Nexus, we call it the Nexus of History and Art. And um, Miss Maybell is coming Friday, September 24th. She happens to be an incredible landscape artist mm -hmm. um, in the Hudson River School tradition. And I found out one day that she happened to sing in some smoky bars in Brooklyn. I'm like, what? So I checked her out and uh, sure, she goes by Miss Maybell and the Jazz Age Artistes, there's three of them. And they're coming to do early 1900 to 1930 music. Ooh. And she dresses the part and, you know, she plays the washboard and harmonica and, you know, banjo and things like this. And there's a tuba there, there's a pianist. So it's early music. So it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. and it'll be in the Keeney Ballroom, spaced apart. These are suggested donations um, to assist us a little bit. Um, we were almost there with the sponsorship, not quite, but anyway. And then um, in October, as a Thursday, we got them through the Jazz Society. Um, somebody on our board um, has connections there. October 21st, the Hyde Club with Matt and at Ludd to Champlin, who is, Matt is actually from Wethersfield. Um, extremely popular couple, singer, pianist. Um, I've heard them a couple years ago, maybe four years ago or five years ago when they played at the Hartford Library, public library, and they packed that room in the back, that auditorium. I mean, there were people standing and going out the door. That's how amazing it was. So um, they're here with this new group, um, the bassist, uh, guitarist, and a violinist and um, they're doing early jazz music in the tradition of Ella Fitzgerald, Duke Ellington and the great uh, American, from the great American songbook and the French Manouche style of the great Reinhardt and somebody. <laughs> so anyway, I, I haven't heard this music yet. So this is a new thing and it should be fun. Um, and again, it's we're going to be spacing out suggested donation. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I just want to say that it's been slightly hard to get um, instructors to come in for workshops because of the COVID thing. Yeah. And then, yeah. You know, even though we have all these filters, uh, HEPA air filters and stuff like that. There's great fear on the part of instructors as well as um, students. So we're running 
classes, you know, um, rather than the workshops. Yeah. So I think you're, you know, branching out works for you for the time being and hopefully yeah. everyone will be able to get back soon. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it just forces us to be a little bit more creative in, in thinking about well, how to reach the public. So. Right. Yeah, it's very true. So, um, all right, great. Okay. Any other updates that we should know about? I just have a suggestion because uh, we're all being so successful and these check-ins are great. Yeah. But oftentimes we're checking in when we've already planned stuff. Right. We're, we're check in, like we checked in in the winter and said, we're doing all this stuff and, you know, kind of, it, it, it gets lost. And I'm just wondering if there's any way that we could facilitate the creation of a, of a count, a private calendar so that we're all aware as we're planning our events and our activities, who's doing what, when, because we, we certainly don't, we're, we're all working together towards a common goal. And, uh, it, you know, to me, more the better, you know, two gas stations on a corner thing. Uh, that said, you know, let's, let's make sure we're not trying to schedule stuff all on the same night. And I don't know if that's like a shared private Google calendar or shared private, some other kind of calendar, but um, I don't know if that's something Peter maybe is already in existence with the town or the town could help us with. Nope, we've talked about it, and I think it's a great um, agenda item for the stakeholders meeting to start that conversation and start kind of that calendar. And maybe you're right, maybe it's a Google calendar or um, something along those lines that we can start putting them in because I think we need to get back to our stakeholders meeting. We try to do those a couple of times a year in enough advance time so that people know what's coming up for the next season. So you have that planning and cross-referencing time, Joshua, so. Um. But I think a calendar would be really helpful. Yeah. Sure, um, I'm not sure if Amy mentioned, but our, our craft fair is October 2nd. So that's coming she up. It was really, really good because it was in October. <laughs> well, I know just because it's almost the end. It's almost at the end. That was true. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know how easy it is to share with Google Docs, but I think we can do, let's think about that, Peter. I think if there's been more opportunity to share calendars, so, okay. All right, um, Jesse, last but not least, hi. How you doing? It's been a while. It's been, I think, June since I've Well, we didn't have any in I've... July. Right. And then I was, or I don't know, one of the months I was either on vacation. Missed, or, I think you missed May or June. I forget which one. Yeah, so it's been it's been a while for me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I did make a video for um, farmers market, um, and it did did okay. Um, I boosted uh, our YouTube account. Um, we got it reached uh, eleven thousand. 475 people. I also boosted Porch Fest, um, a little smaller boost, uh, and it reached um, about 4,000 people. Um, there was a lot going on this summer, probably the most I've ever seen for Weathersfield. And there's just people everywhere. They, everyone, people want to get out. It's been great, and it makes it easy for posts and stuff. Um, so uh, I had a, uh, the, the reach and the um, statistics have been going up. Um, our major uh, posts are the things that, you know, the new people coming in and, you know, um, breweries and things like that. And Sally's Pizza and or a, a Sally's Pizza. Uh, a, um, and then uh, Popeye's was uh, amazingly huge. We got it reached 23,000 people. Um, that's, yeah. that's, that's a lot without even boosting. That's actually about probably a month's worth of uh, statistics. A month, like it would take a, a month uh, to get that. And uh, we 
did it in just one post. Um, so that was really great. Um, let's see what else. Um, the newsletter goes out tonight. Or I'm, you know, trying for it tonight, obviously. Um, uh, and uh, maybe if I just kind of quickly, if you guys don't mind, go through what I have and if someone has anything to add to it, just, yeah. just kind of like let me know. Um, so I have September 1st through September 30th, uh, What is Field uh, Remembers, the exhibit. Um, I have September 10th, Exhibit Reception. I have uh, September 11th, uh, Arts and Letters, which is uh, Cedar Hill. Um, September 12th, the Keene Foundation Picnic. Uh, September 13th, uh, 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce this, bro Brog and Cast Drawing. Um, another September 13th, uh, Painting Still Life or Master Copy. September 13th, uh, the Mayor's Charity Ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, September 16th, the uh, Pacas are coming to uh, the Farmer's Market. Uh, September 16th and 18th, the uh, Ancient Burying Ground Tours. September 24th, the Nexus of History and Art, which is that uh, concert. And September 25th, uh, Lest We Forget, which is another um, theater uh, Hill um, Foundation, and uh, September twenty fifth, uh, Hartford Ave Walking Tour. Jesse, uh, can I can I add yeah. one thing? Um, one of our living history lectures had to be rescheduled, so uh, oh, Tammy sorry. Tammy is doing it on September twenty third. Uh, Elizabeth Freeman is the person that she's going to be. In at reenacting. And do we know when the deadline is for entries for the scarecrows? No, I don't know anything about the scarecrows. Yeah, I haven't heard a thing about it. I'm okay. going to a shopkeeper's meeting Thursday night, so I will um, I'll see if I can find out. But he's putting the newsletter out tonight, and that goes to a lot of the kids. So if you uh, maybe you, if you want to send an email to Joe Pascal. And see if he knows. You have his. You have his email. Yes. Okay. I would try him, and he's usually pretty good about responding. Because I'm thinking usually it starts at the end of September, which means people need to submit. People need to, need to know the submitting. Right. Uh, yeah. Hi, Daddy. No, not now. <laughs> Daddy. Uh, no, I told you not now. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, she knew you were on camera, so it was her opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I'll email him. And uh, I also realized that I'm probably at, I, I have a little side part on the um, newsletter with news and announcement. And I'll add the, since the craft fair is so soon after you know September I'll add that to the, the side uh, part of the newsletter okay. as well and I guess that's about it no I think that is it hey. <clears throat> okay all right oh and look it is right at six o'clock I love it when we end on time <laughs> if there is no other business uh, no public comment. Oh, Amy's raising her hand. Question. Um, I read that there's legislation that either recently went into effect or is shortly going to go into effect that provides for um, pedestrian safety zones to be created in uh, business districts, both on local roads and on state roads. And it seems like it's it's going to be easier to do that. And I don't know if that's necessarily our department, um, but I think that's something that we should be um, pushing for. I'm sure Bike Walk Weathersfield is going to be in there. But um, it, it, from what I read 
uh, speed limits can be as low as 15 miles an hour in these districts. Okay. And when we've got people all over our narrow sidewalks um, and cars flying through, um, I think that's something that um, we should be aware of and lend our support. Uh, Amy, if you if you have a reference to the legislation and you want to send it my way, I will dig that up and send it off to you. Okay. Yeah, Peter, can we add it to the bike pedestrian committee because they haven't finalized their plan yet? Well, that group hasn't met in a while, so we need to. No. Probably in October, try and get get that back on track. Right, pull them back together again. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question just because we're doing so many events and activities, all of us. Um, I, I, I'm mindful that we're bringing more and more traffic, which is wonderful, but I guess that also impacts our parking and not to bring up a sore subject, Peter, but I'm wondering if you, if there's any update on the parking plans. Just so everybody's, um, you know, singing from the same hymnal, we did receive a $500,000 uh, grant from the uh, state uh, through the bond commission. Uh, we're still working through the paperwork on that uh, to um, improve parking, primarily behind the fire department, behind um, Jim Hughes's property, you know, and, and come up with a, uh, basically a consolidation of all of those different parking lots. Uh, so there is a, a conceptual plan, which we actually discussed at a uh, neighborhood meeting a couple weeks back, got some um, feedback, um, need to go back a little bit to the drawing board, but nevertheless, there is a uh, parking plan kicking around and there is some funding to potentially implement it. It's not enough to do the whole thing, but uh, nevertheless, we are looking at what um, parking uh, options are available, particularly down in that end of Main Street. So um, that will be a continuing uh, conversation. Additionally, don't forget, we still have the community connectivity grant uh, funding for crosswalks and intersection improvements and things like that. So uh, we're continuing to work on that uh, as well. So there's a couple of things on the horizon that hopefully will make some improvements um, to all of those things. On Center Street. Yeah, Peter, was there not some discussion about having a formal agreement with the church as well to use some of their parking lot? That has not materialized okay. as we would uh, have liked. Uh, they have a willingness um, to allow the public uh, to use it. Uh, however, the terms under which they would like that to happen don't necessarily make some sense. So there's still efforts to formalize that a little more. Um, and the gentleman who wants to do the brewery is probably gonna be the guinea pig uh, and really have to push that uh, to support his his project, so. Right. Um, I was wondering if some kind of an agreement or a rental kind of thing between the brewery and heirloom could be worked out like for evening parking because heirloom is closed and they've got quite a lot of space back there now they have they have their own plans okay that might uh, not yeah be compatible so okay um so the church is really the makes the most sense and so hopefully there'll be some progress on that uh shortly yeah because i think what's going to happen is they're just going to start using it more and more and then they're going to be unhappy so Sorry. My, neighbors, my neighbors on Center Street have been um, asking when they're going to receive emails um, about the parking situation. They say that they put their emails on a list at that meeting and they haven't received anything. So I just wanted to relay that. Yeah, nothing is nothing uh, of any note has happened. So that's why they haven't mm -hmm. been followed up yet. Uh, you know, on that same subject, uh, the parking behind the Keeney is being taken up quite a bit by uh, Charles customers. 
Well, which it's, it is public parking. So that's where else are they? I mean, and actually I think the Charles directs them there, doesn't it? Don't they? Yes. He, he is required to do that as part of his uh, planning and zoning approvals. Yeah. Yep. So. I'm just thinking that uh, whatever changes are made to the parking on center street is going to even impact, uh, you know, behind the Keeney. Yes. So. Yeah, I just, I'm, I think changes with heirloom and the, and the incoming brewery are going to have a big impact on parking. Um, in addition, that'll just, you know, all of the additional events that the Historical Society and the what Dean Stevens are doing because those are just bringing more people in. So. We'll just need to be aware of it. Okay. Yeah, and just, just, you know, we are being very, we, for our, our events, whether it's a rental or a museum event, we're, uh, per our agreement with the town, uh, we have people out directing parking to on our campus behind the barn. So yeah. all of our event parking actually happens on site. Yeah. So, okay. All right, a couple of good additional items that we might want to think about throwing on the agenda, Peter, just so we know the, um, just the parking, kind of any updates as we have them, but okay. All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, no other business? Okay. Thank you. I think we are ready to adjourn. Can I have a motion? Somebody make it. They made it. We have a second from Jill. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. See you guys uh, actually in just a couple of weeks. All right. Bye, everyone. All right. Good night, Bye, everyone. Everybody. All right.